Hello and welcome to the Hollywood Lowdown, the segment that has everyone saying that fat guy's never been with a woman. Oh yeah, guy, you know who you are. You know, growing up a comic book geek wasn't easy for kids of my generation. Sporting a Superman or Batman t-shirt was an automatic invite to get yourself beat up, leading to years of intense therapy and deeply resenting your middle school. Talking comics made you a target by the elite and alpha males, who ironically lacked the intelligence to even follow the panel order of a comic book page, and trying to explain the appeal of superheroes and supervillains to non-comic book loving friends or loved ones was like someone trying to explain to me how not all foods need to have melted imitation cheese drizzled all over them. But at least I didn't grow up during the 50s where comics were just as much hated and blamed for all juvenile delinquency as sex drugs and Elvis pelvic thrusts that they actually held bonfires a la Salem witch trials on 10 cent childhood innocent stories sold on the same stands as look magazines and trashy pulp sex novels which no one seemed to care about. Pretty messed up, yeah, but this was also a time when one thought hiding under a school desk could protect you from atomic explosions. But I digress. Oh, how the times have changed, for now our superheroes have leapt from the comic pages and onto the silver screen, and oh, how they are stronger than ever, some more than others. Infinity War made more money than what's in Bill Gates' wallet opening weekend, shortly after Black Panther ravaged the box office, where only before that Wonder Woman stormed a new era for girl power, where even before that Thor Ragnarok stood godlike over the box office for three weeks, beating out even the Justice League movie. Heck, even the small screen and streaming sites aren't safe. Punisher, Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, they continue to satisfy binge-watching goodness, and over at the CW, The Flash, Arrow, Supergirl, Legends of Tomorrow, and Black Lightning continue to score high ratings for more lighter but lovable comic book fun, and whose sober age-like universe has ironically held a better universe than the DC films. I said universe a lot just then. That's okay. And of course, over at Fox, Gotham continues its own growing Batman mythology, which just seems to get better as the show explores new concepts and ideas into the Batman universe. Where only decades ago, we never seemed to hear much from superheroes, unless you were Batman, Superman, Spider-Man, the Hulk, and what seemed to be endless rebooting of all of them. Now we have new characters dominating the mountain with Captain America, Guardians of the Galaxy, Black Panther, Thor, Ant-Man, and Iron Man. And while Marvel rides a success wave it so rightfully deserves after a few decades of struggling to get their voices heard, DC continues to find its direction and clean out all the bugs with some of its less successful films, but shows no sign of throwing in the towel. Yet. And whether you're a DC or a Marvel fan or, like me, both, our appetites for superhero movies show no sign of slowing down. From the Marvel Tower, fans are already gearing up for Deadpool 2, Ant-Man and the Wasp, a solo Captain Marvel film, Black Panther 2, and a sequel to Spider-Man Homecoming. Heck, there's even now a Venom picture soon to be hitting theaters, which boasts Spider-Man's greatest villain without Spider-Man. Yeah, okay, makes sense. While over at DC, Wonder Woman 2 will be lassoing her way with a promising sequel, which we hope will lead to a more brighter universe for DC, both Aquaman and The Flash, were, who were more popular and positive characters of the Justice League, will be back with their own solo films. And lastly, in a solo Joker movie, which is very hush-hush at the moment, it will showcase Batman's greatest villain uh, without Batman. Tune in next time when I start hyping up some of the blockbusters coming out that aren't superhero movies for moviegoers who have little to no interest in comic books. And judging by my research, that'll probably take about 60 seconds. So that's good for you. That's less of me. You have to watch and listen. But that's also bad because that's more of John Luck that you have to see and listen to. Now, if you'll excuse me, Gorilla Grodd has returned for an epic battle with The Flash, and Metamorpho just joined the Terrifics along with Plastic Man, and they just dis-